Uh, friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Amen. You know, resurrection is the greatest miracle ever performed. And it's the, it's the greatest miracle because not only was it a miracle that Jesus stepped out of death into life, but it's a miracle that because what Jesus did, that miracle of resurrection continues to resonate into our lives today. And the resurrection power of Jesus has been given to us so that we don't have to be dead, so that we can live fully alive. In John chapter 10, in my, one of my favorite verses, Jesus says this. He says, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I have come that you might have abundant life and be fully alive. Friends, I want you to think about that word, fully alive. Will you just turn to somebody next to you and say, hey, fully alive. See, I'm not sure I always know what exactly that means. Because I think a lot of times, we spend a lot of time just trying to make it through the day. Amen? You know, how many of us just try to put one foot in front of the other? If I can just get to Friday, if I can just get to payday, if I can just get to retirement, if I, you know, whatever that is, we, we spend all this time just trying to make it. And yet, life has got to be more than just making it, doesn't it? I mean, is that what Jesus came for? Is that what Jesus died on the cross for? What he rose from the dead for just so you and I can make it or exist? And so what does it mean to be fully alive? It's, it's got to be something more than just brain waves and pulse and a breath, right? It's got to be something more than being born and going to school and getting a job and having a family and getting to retirement and moving to Florida, right? <laughs> right? Isn't don't you want more out of life? Don't you think Jesus wants more for you? William Wallace, you remember Braveheart, right? William Wallace said this, everyone dies, but not everyone truly lives. Think about that again. Everyone dies, but not everyone truly lives. There is a difference between existing or making it or getting by and truly being alive in Christ. And that's what Jesus came for. He didn't give his life so that we can just get by. Jesus didn't conquer death so that we can just make it. Jesus came so that we might have life abundantly and be fully alive in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, this is what it says. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received, being completely humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love. I, I love that line, live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Now, do you all know that the calling from God is not just for preachers and missionaries, right? 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 Every person who calls himself by the name Christian, every person who professes to follow Jesus has a calling on their life. And Jesus is telling us that we are to live a life worthy of that calling. Now, every once in a while, God calls people to give their lives for their faith. Right? We call them martyrs. You think in the Bible, uh, Stephen in the book of Acts, and you think about the first century martyrs and, and some of our more recent people who have given their lives for their faith. But for the vast majority of us, and I'm going to guess for most of us in this room, God has called us to a much higher calling, a much more difficult task. God hasn't asked you to die for him. God has simply said, I want you to live for me. And friends, I'm here to tell you, that's harder. That's the bigger challenge. That's the bigger calling in our lives. Easter is the story that you were worth dying for so that you can live for Christ. That's the story of Easter, that you were worth dying for so that you could live fully alive in Christ. And when Jesus describes to the people around him what a life fully alive looks like, what he describes is a life of discipleship, 
a life of simply following Jesus. Now, I recognize that that word discipleship is a little scary for a whole lot of us. It's a, it's a pretty big word, and it's a word we don't often use outside of the church. So here at Cornerstone, we've kind of broken it down into some manageable bites for you to think about. And here are the questions we ask if you want to live your most full life. We ask, how am I worshiping, both publicly and privately? How am I growing in accountable community? How am I serving either inside or outside the church? And how am I giving in a way that makes God smile? And however you answer those questions, we will all answer them differently in different ways at different places in our lives. However you answer those questions, the question you follow that with is what does it look like for me to take one step closer to Jesus every day? That's it. That's discipleship. That's how we live our most fully alive life. By taking one step closer to Jesus every day. Now hear me when I say that doesn't mean you're there today. And you may not be there tomorrow. And you may not be there next week. And you may think you may never get there. But I'm telling you the path of discipleship is simply one step closer to Jesus every day. That's what it looks like to live fully alive. Later in Ephesians chapter 5, it tells us this. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and live a life of love. Check that. Live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So there is a connection between living fully alive and living a life of love, isn't there? You have to have those two pieces together. To live a life of love is what it looks like to live fully alive. Now, I want to be careful when I use that word love because we use that word for a lot of things, don't we? Right? I tell my wife, honey, I love you. And I told Mark the other day, I love cheeseburgers. I probably don't mean the same thing. Right? It's probably just, you know, we, we use that word for a lot of things. So, so let me be clear when I talk about living a life of love. What does that look like for us? It's not about my affection, how I feel at the moment. It's not about those butterflies I get in my stomach when everything's going great. It's not even about romance, but it is about love, this committed relationship, it's about saying yes to Jesus no matter what I'm doing, no matter what I'm going through, no matter where I am. And the Bible tells us that we are to live a life of love, but not just our love. Look, look again, it says, just as Christ loved us. So it's not your love you're supposed to give to folks. It's Christ's love that we are called to live and Christ's love looks very different often than ours. It is a love that is perfectly balanced, grace and discipline. Jesus, remember, he told his disciples, I have a new command for you in John 13. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So Jesus didn't say love each other as best as you can, did he? He said love each other the way I love you. Love each other with grace and with discipline. Love each other the way I demonstrated in my life. That's not always a hug and a high five. Sometimes it's hard discipline, like Jesus showed the Pharisees and the religious leaders. Sometimes it's grace for the marginalized and the sinners and those who are, who are in need of God's love. Sometimes love looks like service. It often looks like sacrifice. And love always looks unconditional when it's Jesus' love. If you only pray one prayer, pray this one. Jesus, help me to love like you. Jesus, help me to love like you. I'm telling you, friends, it'll change your world. It'll change the way you see people. It'll change the things you hear. It'll change the way you look at the world. Jesus, help me to love like you love. Earlier in Ephesians, it says this. 
Because of God's great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved, and God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So here's the miracle of of resurrection. Resurrection is not just that thing that happened 2,000 years ago to Jesus that we celebrate today. Resurrection continues to move so that we experience it in our lives today. That we, though we were dead, though we were lost, though we had no hope, have been given life eternal through Jesus Christ. This is the miracle of resurrection. Jesus is not the only one who's ever been resurrected. I'm here to tell you, friends, the miracle of resurrection is for you. And for you. And for you. One of my favorite Easter stories is at the end of the book of Luke. In Luke, it tells us about the women who are coming to the the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. And they walked in and they couldn't find Jesus and the stone had been rolled away and they were worried and they were stressed out and they, they found an angel and they said, where is Jesus? And I love what the angel said to them. Do you, do you remember this? He said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's alive. Right? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And friends, I'd just like to challenge you this morning. That might be a great question for you to ask yourself. Why am I looking for the living among the dead? Why do I look for meaning and significance in my life, in power and prosperity and in positions and in pride? Things that have no authority. Why do I look for the living among the dead? Why do those of us who have been made alive in Christ walk around pretending like we're still dead? Right? Why do we choose to settle or exist or just get by when we have been offered abundant life? Why do we, those of us who have been forgiven, why do we still act like we are stuck in sin and death? Why do those of us who have been offered grace still try to earn our way into God's love? Why do people who have been poured God's love onto them still feel like we have to treat one another in such ugly ways? Why do those of us who have been unified still feel like we need to divide? Why do we look for the living among the dead? And I don't know what that means for you. But my challenge to you is that Jesus Christ came to earth. He lived and he taught and he healed and he showed us a different kind of way. And he gave up his life as a demonstration of what sacrificial love truly looks like. And then, as if that weren't enough, Jesus overcame the one obstacle we thought nobody could overcome. And he conquers sin and death, and he steps out of the grave, and he is alive again, not just so that we can go, yay, Jesus, but so that you and I can live lives that are fully alive. I'm guessing everyone in here is looking for a little resurrection. Can I get an amen on that? We're all looking for it in different ways. Maybe the resurrection you're looking for is in your relationships, marriage, or with your children, or with your family, or community. Maybe there's some brokenness there, and you're looking for some resurrection. I am here to tell you the resurrection power in Jesus is still raising people from the dead today. Some of you are looking for resurrection in your own bodies, in your own lives, in in your health, in your personal lives. And, And I am here to tell you that Jesus that raised from the dead is offering you resurrection today. Some of you are looking for resurrections in your in your hearts, your broken, your emotions, in your your minds, in your lives. 
And I'm here to tell you, we serve a God who loves you enough to offer you life. Not just making it, not just getting by, not just one foot in front of the other, not just hope I get there someday, but a life abundant, a life fully alive. Is there anybody besides me who wants to live fully alive? Amen? Amen. And here's the challenge. What Jesus taught us in the open tomb is that death never has the final word. So whatever your tomb looks like, whatever your hurt, wherever it is you need resurrection, death never has the final word. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Friends, I'd like to invite you to stand for an Easter blessing before we go. Friends, I would just like to invite you to receive the power of the resurrected Jesus in your life. To feel the fully alive love of God who has poured out his grace on you and has offered you a fully alive kind of life. And I'd like to invite you to receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that empowers you to live beyond what you can do by yourself, the Holy Spirit that does in you what you can't do. And may you, this Easter, experience the miracle that God put your name on when you were created. And may you walk out of here today carrying that miracle and share the miracle of resurrection with somebody you know, somebody you love, somebody who's feeling that empty place in their life, somebody who thinks the tomb is the last word. Will you share resurrection with them? Will you invite them to a life-transforming relationship with Jesus? And will you offer them resurrection that you've been given so freely? Church, I love you because Jesus loves you. Make sure you're here next week as we kick off our brand new message series. Text me your questions. Have a great Easter. God bless you. Christ is risen. Amen.